Good day grade 11s. Welcome to your second lesson in week 28. We're still doing finance, growth and decay and in this lesson we're going to revise compound interest. So the compound interest formula is A is equal to P times by I plus 1 all to the power of N. And again you've got A is the amount of money you get out or the amount of whatever. P is the principal, in this case it would be the money you invested. I is going to again be the interest in decimal form and N is the number of years so far. That's what we've learned about so far. So let's do an example to make sure you understand that. So it says John invests 45,000 Rand for five years and Adam's bank this time offers him a savings account with a compound interest of 13.5% per annum. What would John's new balance be after five years? So this time the formula is A is equal to P 1 plus I all to the power of N where your P is your principal which is 45,000 your N is 5 years and your I is 13.5 divided by 100 to get into decimal which is 0 0.135 so if we substitute this into this formula we get A is the principal which is 45,000 times by 1 plus 0 0.135 all to the power of 5 which is 45,000 times by 1.135 all to the power of 5 so we're going to get our calculator out and we're going to close this down okay and we're going to say right what do we have we have got 1.135 to the power of 5 and we're going to times our 45, 1, 2, 3 and we end up with 84,760 Rand and 17 cents. So that becomes 84,760 Rand and 17 cents. 17 cents. Right, so that's the amount of money he will get if he, if he saves in an investment where the interest is compounded. And if you remember from the previous video in the simple interest, he only got out something like 70 odd thousand. So it's definitely better to have compound interest on your investment, your savings investment. Now I want to show you something that's a little bit more complicated. We've been talking about I as an interest rate that has been compounded annually and we've been talking about N as only the number of years. But you could have something different. So let's talk about the different scenarios you could have. So if for example I tell you you've got 13.7% interest for two years but now I tell you it is compounded annually. If it's compounded annually we do exactly what we've just been doing. Our I is going to be 13.7 divided by 100 which is just 0.137 and the N is 2. Okay, No problem. That's what we've been doing so far. But what happens if it was compounded monthly? Now you need to take into consideration that this time your N is going to be how many times per year? It is going to be 12 times per year but now there are two years. So the N is 2 times 12 which is 24 but now the interest is divided by those 12 months so therefore the interest is 0 0.137 divided by 12. Okay, so that's if it's compounded monthly. Let's see what would happen if it's compound, compounded quarterly. If it's compounded quarterly, it means it's compounded every three months. In other words, it's compounded four times per year. Four times per year. So if that's the case, your N is going to be four times by your 2 which is going to be 8 okay because they're 2 years but what is your interest going to be this time instead of dividing it by 12 what do we have to do we have to divide it by 4 so therefore the i is going to be 0 0.137 divided by 4 because we have to divide the interest by 4 but now it is being compounded more often so it's compounded 8 times what would happen if it is compounded daily? Wow, if it is compounded daily, you'd have huge amounts of money. If it's compounded daily, do you agree that there are 365 and a quarter, but we can ignore that. There are 365 days in a year, and we've got two years. So N is going to be your 365 times 2, right? And what is this? This is going to be 0 0.137 
divided by 365. So 0.137 divided by 365 and the number of times it's compounded is 2 times 365 which in this case is 740. Moving on, if it's compounded semi-annually if it's compounded semi-annually, you have that it's compounded twice a year. So therefore we're dividing it by 2 and we are multiplying it by 4. Right, so let's do an example with this. It says 50,000 Rand is invested in the bond market for 7 years. Calculate the amount of money that can be withdrawn if the interest rate is 10.5% per annum compounded quarterly. So the formula is still the same, it's still A is equal to P 1 plus I to the power of N. Your principal is 50,000, 1, 2, 3. Okay, but now we need to think about the interest and the number of payments. Our interest is now, we need to convert that into a decimal. So it's 10.5 divided by 100 which is 0 0.105 but it's compounded quarterly which means that it's paid four times a year so we have to divide that by four so we get at our calculator and we go okay fine we've got 0 0.105 divided by four and that gives us 0 0.0263 okay so it becomes 0, 0,0263. Okay, now let's talk about our N. We have seven years, but for each of the years we're compounding it four times. So if we've got seven times by four, which is 28. Right, now we can substitute this into the formula. So we've got A is equal to the principal of 50,000, 1, 2, 3, times by 1 plus our interest which is 0 0.0263 all to the power of 28. So that becomes 50,000 times by 1.0263 all to the power of 28. So let's just get out our calculator and do that. So we've got 1.0263 to the power of 28 is 2.0686 times by 50, 1, 2, 3, equals 103,431 and 12 cents. So it's 103,431.12. So it is 103,431.12. So after seven years, you can get out 103,431 and 12 cents from this. Not a bad investment at all. So please grade 11s, you have now know, you've always known how to do the compound interest, I mean from last year from grade 10, but now you know what will happen if your compound interest is not just increased at an annual rate. So you need to know how to convert it if it's compounded quarterly or if it's compounded. So in other words, you need to know these. If it's compounded annually, if you've compounded monthly, quarterly, daily and semi-annually because they can give you all of those. Have a great day, grade 11s.